Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers is a film filled with disappointments and a lot of wasted potential. So many things just kind of swept under the rug. But we'll get to those when we get to those. He's back with a vengeance. Starts Friday, October 13th at the Let's get on with the facts first. So apparently, Halloween Forest director didn't want to come back. Apparently, when he first read the script, he didn't want to make a movie about Jamie becoming pure evil. He wanted to make another Michael Myers movie. So Akaj just like, okay, goodbye. He fired him and got another director. So it seems like from the very beginning. First of all, by the way, this movie came out a year after the fourth one, which means you could clearly tell too in the movie things were rushed and things were made up on the fly because the fourth one made a lot of money obviously they want to capitalize on that money and that hype so they're like let's brush this one year later and it's like oh that's not the best move but they did anyways which is why not even daniel harris was convinced banging jamie the kill would have been a better idea than what they went with so so even daniel harris was like where do you go with an evil like little girl now granted i'll i'll, I'll give them some slack there like it's a cool end right i don't know they didn't know where to go with it but i feel the problem with that is that they rush this movie and a writer somewhere maybe would have come up with something a lot more better or something i don't know i couldn't but uh, they could have done something cool maybe again myers consciousness and jamie or something like that but then people wanted myers while that ending is cool i guess i could see why where they put themselves in a really hard place but the beginning of fire was to erase the memory of four's ending simply ignore any discussion of jamie turning evil and apparently donald pleasance found this very disappointing telling fangoria i think they should have gone along with the fact that Laura is now totally evil i was disappointed that we now discovered she did not kill her mother at the end of the last film yeah yeah that that sucks that really sucks apparently it was michael or something and his consciousness apparently it wasn't her even though it was her yeah sucks it, even donald plus was like yeah this sucks very rushed and then daniel harris later on would say that where would we go if they didn't have jamie as a sympathetic character if I was just running all around as Michael Myers' little psychic, I don't really know what ever could have happened. I think they needed to keep Jamie as a sympathetic character to have someone root for, to root for. Yeah, I get that, but man, like you do not have that ending. Just kind of be like the way they ignored it too was just kind of like forget that ever happened. I was like, I don't know, man. It was just so brushed under the rug. Something still very disappointing. But anyways, apparently the director threw the original script in the trash right in front of the producers. The balls on this man. So Akan met with Dominique Oth. Thini Gillard? Don't ask me anything about me redirecting Halloween 5. So the, this director, Dominique, told to HalloweenMovies.com, having watched all Halloween, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare Nature films, he moved with Mr. Arcade and his two men team. Story development and a script writer. After I made an analysis of the market of the horror film and their sequels, and analyzing of the script I received from them, I asked him if I intended to continue over the following and installments of the Halloween films. He laughed and asked who I was, I'm oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. He laughed and asked who I was, who I was to ask such a question. I then said, so if you do, I do what I think I will allow you to continue with a privileged niche that you have in the market he nodded and i took the script gave me i'm messing this up i took the script that they gave me and threw it in the trash can in front of them yeah man the, the balls on this guy he gets he hated that script even after this uh, within 24 hours of the first meeting i caught hired him to write and direct halloween 5 whoa okay they so yeah, had this director he basically like, oh fuck your script i could write a better script which turned out to be somewhat untrue but yeah and i caught allowed him to write and direct it he's got balls of steel is all i gotta say oh i'm so glad this article like mentioned this the Meyer house looks so different granted it's in a different city and state but the continuity in this movie it, or in this series is just kind of all over the over the place this Myers house looks like a, like a goddamn like Dracula mansion of the three story like thing. And it's different in like the next one too, in Halloween 6. It's fucking different as well. And it's like, why is it different? You know, granted, financial issues and this movie being rushed and being shot in Utah. Then just because the movie was shot previously, the previous movie was shot in Utah as well. They needed to find a house and it looks very different. And this is kind of like, when the Myers, and I said that this was the Myers house, it took me out of the film for a bit. I was in there like, damn, you rushed this film so goddamn much that you couldn't even build like a replica of the halloween set but that would have taken time and money as well so you know continuity is just kind of like it's not as bad as friday 13th but it's clearly just kind of like we're doing this uh, for money or something you know like it even says there a quote we had to shoot the film in salt lake city and the neighbors are not similar to the ones of the original halloween in any case michael myers house came in play towards the 
end of our film. It had to be designed for various scenes. I had to plan. It had to be a fascinating set for a 20 minute sh uh, showdown. It had to be. It had to have space, very specific locations like an open living room, many windows for night lining. I desire no interior source of light. But yeah, but it's, it, even the inside has nothing to look with the original. So again, continuity is just kind of thrown out the window. Another thing that's disappointing with this film is the mask. Apparently, the mask was changed to make Michael look humanized. First of all, the mask changed, by the way. It changed from this sleek, very white, very, very white to like this very rubbery look with like more hair. Like, how the fuck does that happen? How? Oh, man. Anyways, the mask was altered due to the director of this movie. He wanted something which looked more human. And so, a quote here says, How can I make this character feel human and live when he has no right to speak and when we cannot see his face nor ex expression? So they use latex as a material. We're gonna create a new series of masks for him with the KNB SFX team. We went for a human interpretation of evil. I wanted also to design myself from the plastic shiny look of the hockey mask of the Fire 13. So this, okay, I think the Halloween 4 mask is probably the worst, but this mask isn't any better. I like the dark holes, but like the neck part, it's so like loose. I don't know if it's like the actor playing Michael Myers in this movie, but the neck part is just so like flappy and loose. Not, not flappy or loose, but it, it seems cheap. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. Apparently it took a script rewrite and a pay raise to get Ellie Cornell to agree to play Rachel's death, which by the way, seemed completely bullshit. Upon re uh, researching, the actor felt that originally her death was going to be very gruesome and her throat was going to be slashed or something. And apparently the actor didn't like that. She felt it was too gruesome. So they just had a micro stab with a fucking scissor next to her collarbone or something. Okay, kind of a weak way to go out. But anyways, even the actors, like she felt that Rachel probably wouldn't survive because of stuff of series like Friday and Elm Street treating and killing off the character in the next movie or something like that. However, she didn't expect to die so soon and so gruesome. Yeah, here we go. The script will call for Michael to shove a pair of scissors down her throat. Would have been awesome. But Cornell put her foot down, but it was too gruesome. She argued that they had Michael stab her in her chest, plus they offered her a little bit more money for that. You know what? That's fine. The actor wanted to do something different, and you know what? She got what she wanted, so you can't really, like, if an actor wants to leave, you can't force them to, like, stay on a show, and you also can't force them to do what, you know, they don't want to do. And so she didn't want to, she didn't feel comfortable having pairs of scissors, you know, shoved down her throat, or, you know, pretending, right? Being killed by Michael Myers. Then, you know, they probably would have changed it, you know? Probably would have violated something in her contract or something. So, yeah. Yeah, and then the director explained if Ellie goes early, or if Rachel goes on, gets killed early, that means anything could happen. So, like a Game of Thrones situation, right? Oh, God. Here we go. The Man in Black. Who the fuck was this character? Apparently, no one working on the film knew about the man in black was supposed to be. It's just another on the fly mentality and idea just to kind of throw in. Introducing this man in black, or not this man in black, this mysterious figure lurking around in the shadows. Again, this thing lurking in the shadows continuing throughout the whole movie. Here we go. Akkad suggests that this was sort of a quick fix for the unfinished scripts, various holes. It would all make sense. They figured in the sequel, he could explain this guy in the six. Until then, let's just drop him here and there and help tie some scenes together. Together, which is basically what the finished product was right he was just kind of there not explained right at least you know let us get an explanation but nope you're gonna have to wait like in a sixth movie and he just kind of pops off kicks a goddamn dog and you know freeze michael in the end that's basically it and he just lurks around dominic says i can't trust them to do whatever you want with the man in black which was nothing the point was to keep it vague which is true enough for the next writer or director in a Halloween franchise to come along and figure it out so with that in mind dominic created a man in black as someone spiritually connected to michael and found the idea of the Mark the thorn to attack too to link him to Michael on set. There's this mark, the thorn mark on Michael's like right, it seems on his like right artery. And that's just kind of introduced because we want to make him supernatural, but he's like not supernatural because he can still die. Like, like you don't see him like time travel, or not, not time travel, but traveling to various points like Jason does. So like, is he still human or is he just supernatural? That is never explained. They like kind of cross line of supernatural, but they don't go on full supernatural with Michael Myers. But, but yeah, this, this guy, in black it felt like a waste of time not only were they, were they wasting time with this character they also kind of like just didn't do shit in this movie like let's see so we xx out the ending of four radio dies early to mass looks all right i guess they're all oh got that there's a scene of like a comedy bit with these two cops of like duck sounds or something of music that was kind of whatever it was hilarious when i first watched it watch we watch it now tonally it doesn't make any sense but i'm just gonna forget about that scene yeah i don't know i, I really don't want us to say this is just an, a perfect example of a studio cashing in on the hype and trying to rush a movie in a sequel in and due to that there's a lot of things on the flight 
things being made up and and yeah th that's halloween 5 the revenge of michael myers oh this is interesting donald shanks revealed an interview that many of the scenes involving the man in black had him playing the character because of speculation that he was a blood relative of michael myers he also admitted that even the writers were uncertain about the man in black's identity making lining up and making sense with the fact this movie being rushed even the writers didn't know what the fuck to do with him he was just kind of there too i was like okay this is interesting and it keeps going on and on and on and it doesn't get explained and he breaks michael's out in the end and they explain the next move which feels like a waste of time and it introduces us that this thorn mark is dumb which is them explaining how he's able to come back or something that is dumb as well apparently there were shots there was reshoots in the uk for unknown reasons with the unknown british extra really so there was reshoots in the uk wait where in uk all right well that's interesting oh i guess there's one positive one scene that i'll have praise for it's the laundry shoot scene where jamie is in a laundry shoot and michael is like randomly stabbing on, on the wall that was pretty cool pretty cool apparently jimmy was stabbed in the leg but the shot was cut from the film by the mpaa because it was deemed too disturbing down here still owns the prosthetic leg used in that tape wait what oh never mind. oh god i'm a dumbass i thought she has a prosthetic leg. she has a prosthetic leg i'm sorry forget what i just said forget it but yeah the mpaa yeah okay sure and apparently this laundry shooting was shot with 30 different sections which sounds like a lot some were props and some were just horizontal like camera rolling through a dolly but if that's one praise and one positive i'll give this movie it's that and yeah that's it this movie by the way wasn't violent as well they stepped back they were this new director was like you know what let's go with something with more of the original huh and i don't know this is this movie is again full of disappointments a lot of waste potential e even donald pleasance as great as he is he's weirder this one he's up in people's business and like space he's like shaking this little girl's body he's like hurting her he's like hey man you should stop doing that and she's in pain she's in this like asylum ward or something and he's trying to go to her like what do you see and it's just it's weird it's weird oh uh, they also have jamie be mute which has bothered a lot of halloween fans but it doesn't bother me as much because now they like wasted that story with her becoming evil so have her, her mute i guess was the best way i have no idea have her mute because this is turning into more of a rant now isn't it shit i don't want this turn here i got him rant oh fuck anyways if this sounds like a rant i'm sorry i don't want to i feel like i'm repeating shit but the main sort of problem again i already gave the positive right that launcher shoot scene so the, the main issues with this movie it being super rushed things not being explained to be explained in, in the next sequel which is not a good mindset that will only be good if you have things planned out like the mcu or something like that but if you don't have things planned out which in this case wasn't clearly it just feels like you're wasting time like the audience sign thorn tattoo sign uh mark thing it's fucking dumb. Apparently he had this mark this whole damn time. Oh, I guess one other positive, the way he gets out of the little well thing. Apparently they just blew up nothing and he got out floating on this river and this like hobo or hermit living alone helps him for one year and then in return kills him. That's super fucked up. And then just throwing away a wasted storyline. Again, even Donnie Harris and later in interviews said that what could have they done? I don't know. With maybe an extra year, not rushing this a year later, maybe they could have some writer could have come up with something. You know, Michael living through Jamie, right? Like stuff like that. Now granted, Jamie would have been imposing because she's it, it, it's a little girl growing around killing people probably would have felt more like chucky but no, i mean that's all i gotta say the movie itself is not necessarily bad but i'm probably gonna say it is bad and do so because it's how disappointing it is it's clearly not the worst but it's like bad to okay okay at best because mm, oh yeah how can i forget michael cries in this movie too jamie's like saying no uncle stop right please stop and he like cries and takes off his mask and you know jamie sees his face and he's like, oh no I, i'm embarrassed puts his mask back on has a killer okay i even forgot about the the final like beating but basically how michael gets caught is an old ass man lipping on his last legs tying him in his net and beating him with a goddamn bat basically oh and shooting him with like darts too like sleeping darts or something like that so yeah an old man beating up michael myers granted this is donald pleasant dr loomis old man so you know maybe he's different but yeah an old man beating up this this evil evil thing yep that's how he, that's how he gets defeated oh well, yeah that's all i gotta say overall halloween 5 the revenge of michael myers is i'm going to say bad in 
thing though, I don't think it's that even that bad. It's more disappointing. But in terms of my rating, whether it's it's definitely between okay and bad, I'm going to say bad for all of the wasted potential and disappointments that this movie creates, basically, and things that happen. But let's move on from that. Next up on the 26th will be Halloween or Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. 